Get out of the car. thought to yourself man I think this person's lying to me I mean I'm pretty sure they're lying to me right in front of my face I wish there was a way to detect if they were lying well guess what if you're law enforcement sales HR or just generally curious to find out I got something for you we all face deceit but now there's a way to cut through the lies introducing Deceptio AI the first AI deception detection tool created by a veteran deputy U.S. Marshal. After nearly 30 years of apprehending bad guys and training more than 25,000 law enforcement, they've put his deception detection expertise into this powerful tool. Deceptio AI analyzes people's statements for deceptive keywords, revealing the truth hidden in their words. Law enforcement can enhance their investigation, sales executives can better forecast deals, and HR can protect companies from deceit and vet new candidates for hire. With use cases in 22 different industries from law enforcement to insurance fraud, Deceptio AI is revolutionizing truth detection. For only $19 plus usage fees, you receive 3,000 word credits each month. And as a special offer for the Nod Squad, visit www.deceptio.ai. Put in code NOD1000, that's NOD1000, for 1,000 free word credits once you subscribe. So subscribe today to start uncovering the truth and get to the bottom of things. Deceptio AI, words reveal the truth. Now let's get back to what I believe is your favorite YouTube channel. And if you want to fact check me, you know where to go. Welcome back to another episode of Police Vlogs, where we go around the nation checking out different agencies and what they have to offer. Today, we're going to be continuing that criminal interdiction unit with the Florida Highway Patrol. Left you guys hanging with that cliffhanger last week. This week, we're going to finish out that call. But before we do, I want to make a point to tell the new viewers that this is an actual continuation of last week's episode. So I will go back and watch last week's episode so you can kind of figure out what's going on into this week's episode. And to give everybody else a refresher, it's the Florida Highway Patrol criminal interdiction unit. They teamed up in Miami Gardens with the task force with the Miami Gardens Police Department auto theft unit they're doing proactive patrol in high crimes area they're trying to target those violent offenders with that let's finish last week's call Nine, ten, fifty, one eighty-third, and twelve. We had one fighting. He's in custody. Oh, dumb. Stand up. Eight oh nine. He arrives at twelve. One, two. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? You get out of the car. You get out of the car. You don't fight. You see that? 8-0-9, we got multiple units, 10-12. Start a 10 70 off rotation. All right, so this traffic stop started off a little weird all the way from the beginning when Trooper Botello turned on his lights. The driver refused to stop. He wasn't driving at a higher rate of speed or anything, but he just proceeded to drive for a couple blocks. So Trooper Botello radio for assistance. Trooper Alvarez and I uh, headed that way to go back him up. 
Once the driver finally pulls over, Trooper Botello approaches and he notices that the driver is a little upset for some reason. When he asks him to present his ID, he then proceeds to throw the ID outside of the window, which hits Trooper Botello. Now, Trooper Botello, being an experienced officer, tells the driver to go ahead and pick it up. Now, it's important that you do that because that whole process of throwing the ID out the window could be a distraction to get Trooper Botello to take his attention off the driver. Maybe he puts his head down, the driver hits it and takes off, or even worse, puts his head down and then the driver produces a firearm and ambushes Trooper Botello. Trooper Botello is not taking the bait, tells the driver, pick up the ID. Driver proceeds to pick up the ID, then slams the door. As I said before, he was already showing signs that he was upset. Trooper Alvarez notices that he slams the door, asks the driver to step out of the vehicle. Driver refuses, so Trooper Alvarez goes in there to assist him out of the vehicle. Once he puts hands on him, he starts to pull away. Now I told you about the distraction and all this stuff, it's just a weird traffic stop. Like I said, starting from the beginning, you're refusing to stop, you're upset for some reason, you throw the ID, we ask you to step out, you don't step out. And then as I go to grab you, you pull away, are you reaching for a gun? This is things that we have to keep in mind. At this moment, for officer safety purposes, we're at a high alert, we're at a level 10. There's something going on, we need to get this guy out of the vehicle. Now, if you have any questions as to if an officer can take you out of the vehicle, let's take a look at Pennsylvania versus MIMS. In Florida, law enforcement officers have the authority to ask a driver to exit their vehicle during a traffic stop. This authority is based on a US Supreme Court ruling, Pennsylvania versus MIMS, which held that police officers can order drivers out of their vehicles for officer safety during traffic stops. This ruling applies to all states, including Florida, and does not require officers officers to have any specific suspicion that the driver possesses a threat. The primary justification is to reduce the risk to officers by allowing them to observe the driver more closely and reducing the chances of a hidden weapon or sudden movements. That means if on a traffic stop an officer asks you to step outside the vehicle, you are legally required to comply. So once the troopers are able to get him out of the vehicle, their backup arrives. Once subdued, they put him in handcuffs and continue with the traffic stop, which now led to an arrest. Not to rub salt in anybody's wounds, but I'm 99.9999% sure that if the driver just would have stopped and complied, he would have been let off with a warning. You done with the narrative? You need to do it. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. The charge is going to be resisting with violence, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get him transported to TGK. Subject ran into the plaza. He's wearing all black. He's wearing all black. He's wearing, so wearing all black, ran into the plaza. All right, get up. He's in the car. Get up. He's in the car. The center This area that the subject built into happens to be an industrial complex and it's huge. It's four square miles, two miles across, two miles up and down. There's trees, there's buildings, there's lakes, there's all kinds of stuff there. So the suspect in this case bailed out into an area that's so big that it was difficult to set an effective perimeter. So with that, the troopers commenced a targeted search in an area that they felt that was the most likely to have the subject hiding. At one point, it seems as though the canine picked up a scent and was following, but later on lost that scent. So what we have here is we have a gray Dodge Charger that took off from one of our units in the detail. The subject built out into a large industrial area here in Miramar. Unfortunately, Miami-Dade Aviation was tied up on another perimeter. We were unable to uh, locate, but we do have a rental agreement in the vehicle. We have a name and we will be following up on it at a later time. So we're gonna move on to the next. All right, let's go. I told him as soon as he makes the left uh, to pull over, Sergeant. Don't want to pat my body, God. You have a bite on the way. Um, on your waistband? 
If I get it, Ralph. yeah. This guy decides while the troopers are on a stop, I'm gonna roll by and rev my engine as loud as he can so that troopers can hear my exhaust pipes. And when they look at me, I'm gonna give them a nice little stare down. Well, it turns out that the driver himself was recording his own video trying to flex for Instagram. A little word to the wise. If you're gonna get law enforcement's attention, make sure that you're all squared away and you don't have a modified exhaust, which is illegal in Florida, or a modified tag turns out that the driver had an altered tag so the troopers had enough probable cause to stop this vehicle you don't have to stop I know what I got pulled over for he's gonna let you know the multiple things you got pulled over Once you buy it, it goes on your car. You can't change anything on it. You notice the driver questioning the validity of the stop. The trooper was explaining to him you can't have an altered tag. Trooper Hernandez then proceeds to go to his vehicle to run the driver's license, which comes back suspended. So you have an altered tag, altered exhaust, and you're driving with a suspended license. They here? Oh, I just went to the park yeah. a couple of days ago. That's, that's rough though, right? Damn. So the driver states he doesn't know that his license is suspended in the state of Florida. If you're driving with a suspended license unknowingly, then the penalty is just a traffic citation. If you have knowledge of your license being suspended and you decide to drive, well, then it becomes a misdemeanor and it is arrestable. So Trooper Hernandez explains to the driver everything that's going on, kind of educates him a little bit in the law and on making better decisions when he's out and about driving around and antagonizing law enforcement. So they gave him a break, had somebody come pick him and the car up, and they continue shift. You, it's okay if I show your face on YouTube? Yeah, you can show my face. All right. What's your name? My name is Ghost. Ghost? All right, Ghost. So Ghost, what was the whole point of talking to us? Are you aware of who we are? Yeah, I'm aware of who we are here. Like Oh man, that blue man. Let's see how at home. Yeah, what you sure you yours? Oh, oh, but why you keep it in the trunk if it's not you? Is that a buckshot? Probably no, what? Man. That boy that's shooting bird shot. Shoot this you need to shoot outdoors, brother. <laughs> God. Looks I, like I, I honestly thought he was shooting buckshot. <laughs> Oh, I see her. 90 miles an hour, medium traffic, approaching 
151. She just went over the hill crest. Over 151. Over 151. We're in traffic 90 miles per hour. Alright, looks like we might be. We're in my block. Alright, getting off of 151. Getting off of 151. Looks like we are going to be heading towards the west. Northwest 7th So basically we had a female motorcyclist that decided to take off from an attempted traffic stop. She was driving ex extremely reckless, erratic, all over lanes. Once uh, CIU troopers attempted to make a traffic stop, as they tried to overtake her, she just took off. All throughout our main arteries, she was endangering the public, endangering herself, endangering our law, our law enforcement officers. Once we arrived here at the intersection of Northwest 7 and 160th, uh, uh, 160 block, she was traveling against oncoming traffic. Again, endangering herself, endangering all the motorists. And once my CIU trooper, the canine vehicle, approached this intersection traveling in the inside lane, she decided to cut around and went straight into that patrol car, aggravated battery. Okay, at this time, she unfortunately was ejected, but she sustained very non-life-threatening injuries, some road rash, she's okay. She was transported immediately. We notified rescue right away. The, obviously, you can see the motorcycle is damaged, which sustained some significant damage, and the uh, Chevy Tahoe sustained some damage, but it's still, you know, functional. What did she say she ran for? She stated when she was over there that she ran because she thought her license was suspended, but we conducted a systems check, and it it's checks out. It's valid. So, she, so it wasn't suspended? So it was not suspended. Mm. So honestly, we don't know why she ran, other than that maybe she was deciding to uh, test out that motorcycle, see how, I don't know, how fast it went. But it was very dangerous, and then this is the type of things that happen when you flee from the police. Extremely dangerous. All right, so between going out on shift with these departments, late hours at night, coming home, editing all times of day, trying to bring you guys some cool content and a lot of good information, I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you for that. Give me a little comment here and there, ask some questions. I'm trying my hardest to answer as many questions as I can. We have a lot of new agencies coming to the channel one that's pretty popular on YouTube. We have another agency that's probably the largest agency in the world. I'm just gonna leave those little teasers there. Maybe you guys can figure it out in the comments below. We're also gonna continue those Carroll County Sheriff Department videos that we filmed up in Georgia. If you haven't seen the first one, I'm gonna link it right here. We went out with their awesome Dodge Challenger. We also went on some patrol calls, and later on, we're gonna do some SWAT warrants, and we're gonna go on night patrol. There's a lot of good stuff coming up in those episodes. With that being said, I'll see you when I see you, and if I don't see you, well then I'll see you. Try to catch me howling at the moon.